Since the emergence of the novel coronavirus, scientists have been racing to model its spread using mathematical models, which use math to describe things that happen in the real world. Using appropriate models, scientists can predict how the virus has already spread, will continue to spread, and what measures should be taken to stop it. Many different models can be used to describe the spread of infectious disease, and among the most useful is the SIR model. The SIR model is a compartmental model, meaning it is made up of different groups or compartments that represent a population. The three groups in the basic SIR model are the susceptible, the infectious, and the removed populations. The susceptible population is made up of people who are vulnerable to the infection, the infectious population is made up of people who currently have the infection and can infect others, and the removed population makes up those who were infectious and are no longer infectious or susceptible, meaning they have either recovered and become immune to the virus, or they have passed away from it. The different groups in the model change in size as time progresses and the virus moves through the population. We can begin with a very small infectious population who has the potential to infect anyone in the susceptible population. As the infectious population increases in size, more and more people from the susceptible population will become infected. People in the infectious population will start to recover or pass away over time, moving them to the removed population. When enough of the population has gained immunity, the spread of the infection will slow and the infectious population will gradually decrease. You might be wondering how we can tell when enough people have gained immunity to decrease the spread of an infection, or why that number might be different for different diseases. The lines on this graph are described by the differential equations that make up the SIR model. A quick look at these equations, and the parameters they depend on, will show us how viruses with different properties can spread through populations in very different ways. These are the differential equations that define how the susceptible, infectious, and removed populations change over time. These terms are derivatives, which essentially just means change over time. Here, the ds over dt term means change in susceptible population over time, and so on. You might notice that the change in susceptible population only has one term, which is negative. That's because this population can only decrease in size, like we saw in the last graph. You might have also noticed that this term shows up again in the change in infectious population, except here it's positive. We call this term a transition term because it represents the people who were in the susceptible population, become infected, and move to the infectious population. This term is directly dependent on the size of both the susceptible and infectious populations, because if there are more people to infect and more people who can infect them, people will move from susceptible to infectious faster. This term is also dependent on beta, which is a variable we call the contact rate, meaning it is related to how often infected people are coming into close enough contact with others to spread the infection. Contact rate depends on how the infection is transmitted, how frequently individuals will come into contact with others, and other factors related to culture and geography. There is another transition term in this set of differential equations, and this one represents people who run the course of the virus and either recover or pass away and move from the infectious population to the removed population. This term depends on the size of the infectious population, since if there are more infected people, there will be more people recovering or dying. This term is also inversely dependent on a constant represented by gamma, which we call the recovery rate. Inversely dependent just means that we divide by this constant instead of multiply. Gamma is simply the average amount of time it takes for the virus to run its course. This is dependent on the biology of the virus and how it interacts in the body. Like we saw in the equations, the rate at which people move from susceptible to infectious is partially dependent on beta, the contact rate. So, if beta is small, meaning less contact, people will move from susceptible to infectious slowly. If beta is large, meaning more contact, people will move from susceptible to infectious quickly. In these graphs, everything in the model is the same, except beta is doubled for the second graph. You can see, the graph of the infectious population with the higher beta has a higher and narrower peak, and that more people are infected over time. When scientists talk about flattening the curve, this is what they mean mathematically, lowering the contact rate to slow and ultimately reduce the spread of the infection. We also saw that the rate at which people move from infectious to removed is inversely dependent on gamma. Gamma is the average amount of time the infection lasts, so if the infection lasts for a long time, then gamma is large, and dividing by it will make the transition term small. This means that the rate at which people either recover or pass away is slow. The opposite is also true. If gamma is small, then the transition term will be larger, and the removal rate will be fast. In these graphs, everything in the model is the same, except this time we are varying the average infectious period. When we double the infectious period, the infectious peak occurs faster, since the infectious population is larger and can spread the infection faster. This is why treatment for infections, if available, is essential. Lowering the time that someone is infected also helps reduce the spread of the infection. 
The SIR model is good for many different diseases, but disease isn't always as simple as susceptible to infectious to removed. Many diseases involve a latent period, where an individual has contracted the disease but is not yet infectious and cannot transmit it to others. This latent period is a biological trait of the virus and depends on how the virus interacts in the body. The addition of the E, or exposed compartment, transforms the SIR model to the SEIR model, taking account for diseases with a latent period. Here we can see the difference between the SIR and SEIR models. These two models have the same contact rate and infectious period, but the SEIR model has a latent period. You can see that the latent period causes the infectious peak to occur later than in the SIR model with no latent period. As it turns out, the differential equations for the SIR and SEIR models are pretty similar. In fact, there are only two differences. First, the transition term that took us from susceptible to infectious in the SIR model now takes us from susceptible to exposed. Second, there is a new transition term that takes us from exposed to infectious. This term is dependent on the size of the exposed group because the more exposed people you have, the more will become infectious over time. This term is also inversely dependent on a new constant, alpha. Alpha is simply the average latent period, or the average amount of time from when the infection is contracted to when the individual becomes infectious. Everything is the same in the two models shown here, except the latent period is doubled in the second model. We can see that in the model with the longer latent period, the exposed peak is higher and broader, since the people in this model take more time to become infectious. For the same reason, this model also has an infectious peak that occurs after the peak in the first model. There's even more we can do with the SIR model. When modeling diseases with high mortality rates, it's often useful to keep track of how many pass away rather than putting them in the removed compartment with those who recover. Separating the recovered and the deceased allows scientists to perform studies where they predict fatality and how different measures might affect it. The SIRD model takes the removed compartment and splits it between a new recovered compartment and a deceased compartment. Here we can see the difference between the SIR and SIRD models. All the parameters here are the same, so as you can see, the susceptible and infectious lines are exactly the same in both models. The only difference is the removed line in the SIR model is split between the recovered and deceased lines in the SIRD model. As you probably imagined, the differential equations for these two models are very similar. The susceptible and infectious equations are the exact same in both models. In the new, recovered, and deceased compartments, there is a new constant, m. This constant is the mortality rate of the infection, or the fraction of infected people who pass away. Since we're essentially splitting the removed compartment into two new compartments in the SIRD model, it makes sense that the deceased compartment should just be the old removed term multiplied by the mortality rate. Similarly, the recovered compartment should be the removed term multiplied by the fraction that survives, which is 1 minus m. These two models are the same, except in the second graph, the mortality rate is doubled. Since nothing else is different in the two models, it makes sense that the susceptible and infectious lines are the same for both, because those compartments are not dependent on the mortality rate. This means that in both models, the same amount will be removed, meaning they will move either to the recovered or deceased compartment. If the mortality rate is higher, more will be deceased, so it makes sense that the second model will have more deceased and less recovered than the first model. The SIR model can be modified with any combination of the additional compartments. In this video, I discussed the E or exposed compartment and the D or deceased compartment. There are even more compartments that can be added to enrich this model, including M for infants who acquire immunity from their mothers, V for those who gain immunity from a vaccination, and T for those who are treated while they are infectious. The different versions of the SIR model can be useful for different infectious diseases. Many scientists prefer to use the SEIRD model to model the novel coronavirus since it is believed to have a significant latent period and we are interested in how many deaths it may cause. A simpler SIR or SIRD model may be used for influenza which has a shorter latent period. Other diseases that are commonly modeled are airborne diseases with lifelong immunity, such as measles, mumps, rubella, and pertussis. With the recent spread of the novel coronavirus and the entire world searching for solutions, scientists use variations of the SIR model every day, especially the SEIRD model. This model has allowed scientists to make predictions about how many people will become infected and how this number might increase or decrease as we change social distancing regulations. Scientists can also fit this model to real data 
to determine how well populations are following social distancing rules. With the help of the SIR model, we can better understand diseases and their impacts on society.